Hi guys, welcome back to the God of Onions podcast season 2, layer 2. I am Hiral Mehta, your host. I am a contemporary artist and the owner of my brand, House of Hiral, where I design and sell lifestyle products as well as art pieces. And I'm also the founder of God of Onions podcast, where we open the layers of art, feminism and businesses. Today we have Sanjay Parekh. Sanjay is a multi-instrumentalist singer, songwriter and producer from Los Angeles with a mission to inspire personal transformation through his music. His vision is to create music that inspires liberation, propelling listeners into discovering the enormous power that resides within them. Let me add him to the live, guys. Hi, Sanjay. Hey, how are you? Can you hear me? (laughs) I'm good. How are you? Doing good. Yeah, I'm in um, Omaha, yes. Nebraska right now. Yes, that's amazing. That's really yeah. amazing. I think there's a lot of time difference between India and Omaha. <laughs> yeah, I think it's like 11 hours or something. So, yeah, yes. good to see you. <laughs> it's amazing. I think I finally get to see you. So I think that's amazing. <laughs> We're related. So this is actually really interesting. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yes, that's really interesting. uh, Yeah, cool. Well, uh, thanks for having me. I'm excited to be here. So, Thank you so much, Sanjay. It's amazing having you on my platform. So I think I'm going to start with my questions now. Okay. Um, Yes. So my first question to you is, what inspired you to be a musician? I think, um, yes. There you go. Sorry. I can see you now. Yes. So I'll ask my question again. Uh, My first question is, what inspired you to be a musician? Oops. (laughs) I think uh, there's a network issue. I think we'll wait for some time, guys. So, um... So for the ones who've joined here, I am Hiral Mehta. I am I own a brand called as House of Hiral, where I design and create lifestyle products and art pieces. And I'm also the founder of my podcast, God of Onions. And I believe Sanjay has just gone off because of network issues. Let me send him a request again. Yep, I've sent him a request again to join this live. So for the ones who do not know me, um, I'm going to... Yes. There you go. Hi, Sanjay. Yeah, I think back. there was yeah. some network issue. Yeah, no yes. problem. <laughs> Amazing. So I think I'll start with my questions now. Okay. Um, so what inspired you to be a musician? Oh, that's a good question. Um, you know, I think it was first listening to music. That's kind of usually how it's just how it happened i was really um i used to love the beastie boys growing up i heard somebody playing it and i was just kind of blew me away you know in terms of hearing like just the sounds of like the drums and these guys rapping over it and um i think at that point i just knew i wanted something to do with music but i wasn't exactly sure what and then as i had friends you know growing up that would play guitar or keyboards or piano or sing I think that just became clear and clear that that was what I wanted to do so um I just wanted to make noise I guess so that's amazing that's uh, beautiful and I think Hago music says besties are besties (laughs) oh besties are besties I'm sorry besties are besties yeah (laughs) he's right besties (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) All right. That's amazing. Um, I think I'll go to my next question now. Uh, My next question is, how does your music inspire your listeners? Um, Well, that's a... I think that music in general just inspires people by letting them feel something that maybe they haven't felt before. You know, music is a really interesting medium. It's you can't see it or touch it necessarily. You have to actually hear it, which then um, lets you feel it. So I think that that process, if it's delivered really authentically, it can it can really, really inspire people. And that's what I try to do when I'm 
writing music or performing is to really come from a place that's really, really authentic. And I think that authenticity um, is really inspiring and refreshing to people that are listening to it. So um, I hope my music does that for people, but that's the goal with how I try to portray or carry a message across or tell a story. So that's amazing. I really yeah. love your music. I love the one which is uh, the dive room. Uh, I think. Uh, oh, yeah. Yes, I think that's amazing. I love it. I keep listening to that. Uh, oh, cool. Whenever I am painting or doing my art pieces, I think I keep listening to that continuously sometimes because, you know, it just gets you into another um, mm -hmm. space or, you know, music is something which can take you somewhere. So yeah. I think that's beautiful. So as you said, that music can take you to a journey. I think that's uh, beautifully said. Yeah, that was the idea with that song was to um, there's actually an interesting story behind how that song came about. It was that I, you know, this was maybe 10 years ago when I was learning how to meditate. My teacher would always tell me to dive into the darkness. And oh, wow. he's like, that actually is what takes you on that journey of meditation. And the, the darkness was just closing your eyes and going into that and embracing it. And so I felt it was a really cool lyric for the song, which, yeah, it, it takes you on a sonic journey for sure you know that's amazing so, that's, yeah yeah yes that's amazing and uh, hargo music as well as uh, says that dive is on point so well Har hargo yeah. is actually one of i have another project and he's my bandmate uh we, we've oh, been playing this together for a long time so he was there when the song was being formed so he was a part oh. of that yeah that's amazing that's amazing yeah. so i'll go to my next question okay um my next question is can you tell something about your spiritual detours and transformation um yeah gosh where do i start i think you know it's the spiritual detours were just uh kind of um they kind of go in waves right so you i think in life you go through these periods where you seem complacent and then you have a desire to break out of that complacency. And I think that's, True. you know, or you hit a point in your life where you're stuck and you want to, you want to break through. And I think that those were the times where I had um, the detours is I would try to do something to, there was just a desire there to, to experience something different. Um, uh, you know, just with, whether it was adventure or being stuck creatively or, just wanting to peel back the layers like an onion and uh yeah <laughs> kind of find the find the truth behind something so um i think i've always just had a curiosity into spirituality and uh as i was you know the journey of being an artist or you know with the, the you know the family dynamics i grew up in a family that was very um they were scared that that was what I wanted to do. So it kind of made me question myself, was this the right thing for me? So that was actually one layer going deep. It was asking myself um, a lot of questions. So I would say that like, you know, as you go deeper into yourself and you ask yourself questions about why you want to do things and whether uh, you feel worthy to do it or question your identity, it kind of brings you into a place where you start to ask yourself, um, deeper and deeper questions and those things actually created many of the detours and and like the the transformation so um music's been a huge part of that as my music has grown so is my my spirituality and um you know i think that it's funny being indian and then being in the states you know when growing up here as you guys call us abcds but um you know it's uh it's cool because you get to read, you get to discover a lot about yourself and in, in your culture. So in that, that was a really big, um, I was a really big motivator towards going into spirituality because it, it's like in our genetics, you know? And so going to India, True. visiting, going to, uh, you know, where my mom grew up and your mom grew up for a part of it in Kanpur yes. was interesting. So all of those things were, um, added to that you know and gave me perspective and i think those things led to transformation and then as i got older um 
I think traveling was a huge part of that. I went down to the Amazon jungle. I went to, you know, traveled to India for a while, went to Costa Rica. Um, and, you know, just recently this album that I'm working on was in Hawaii. So I've always just felt uh, a desire to learn about myself and about, you know, like the truth behind things, you know, you just, I'm curious. And I think a lot of those things um, lead you down these paths where you start to just transform yourself. And I think that music and art, as an artist, you're when you're so connected to your music and in your art and you're very authentic, it's just a direct reflection of you and you're trying to tell your story. So as you do that and you're sharing it, it actually is a healing process for yourself. So that's, I hope that answers your question. I think that's yeah. amazing. I mean, that's beautifully said. And um, I have another question after listening to your journey that uh, where do you think you have reached now? <laughs> or it's still, uh, you know, it's always a journey and it's going to be a continuous journey altogether. Mm -hmm. where you, you, um, sorry, it broke up a little bit. You said, where is the next part of this journey? So, um, after what you've said, I think it mm -hmm. intrigued me to ask you, where do you think you have reached now? Um, I'm still, at the, <laughs> yeah. still the journey. It's all yeah, the journey. Yeah, yeah. I think it's just always a journey. I think I'm at a, a better place of, um, in terms of my own transformation and, and, you know, and journey with everything. I think I'm just starting to understand, like, this process of really, um, really committing to yourself and I, and your art and your vision, which I think is really, really important. And those things, you know, they lead you to deeper questions about yourself. Again. True, true, and those, so true. I'm always, always a student, always on the journey. I think that's what keeps life interesting. So, yeah. That's amazing. It's an ocean. So yeah. I think that's quite Yes, that's quite interesting to know um, about your journey. So yeah. I'll go to my next question now. So my next question is, um, can you tell us about your last track, Dive? I think I love that uh, music. I think I would love to know more about it. Yeah, so the song was um, originally, you know, it actually, my original vision for that song and what I wanted it to be is actually what it completely turned into. So that, that was really cool. Sometimes you have a vision for something and it kind of changes a little bit. But this was my intention that I set with that song to the video and the way it was done was actually this is a really, really cool story, the way that all happened. So, yeah, my I was thinking I was at a point in my life where I was thinking about, you know, do I actually want to still pursue music in, you know, at all? <laughs> I wasn't sure. And it was at a point where I was really thinking about wanting to you know, I played with different projects and bands, but this was the yes. first time I really wanted to do anything on my own. So I thought about it and I actually, you know, through this thing we're talking about with spirituality and my my yoga teacher, uh, Shashi is his name. He, when he taught me how to meditate, he would say, you know, dive in deep to the darkness. So I thought that was a really cool um, lyric and I thought that was a really cool way to make like a first song on the album because it's pulling you into a journey yes and so i i remember i was just at home one night i was living in in hollywood and i was just hanging out with my friends who also lived in my in my building and i came back and i was just you know i kind of made a decision to myself i'm like okay i'm gonna write the first song for the record and i want it to be dive in deep to the dark so i want that to be the lyric and so as I did that, I kind of put it together all at once. And uh, my girlfriend at the time came over and she was just like, whoa, that's actually pretty cool. So it came out really quickly. And then um, after that, I just spent a lot of time, you know, kind of finishing it. And so, yeah, the song was really kind of like, it was kind of almost like singing it to myself, like telling myself to go dive in deep to go on this project. Cause I was like, okay, I'm going to do uh, an album or a three song record. And so as this song started to come to life, I was actually really shy about sharing it. And uh, I 
decided to play it for some friends and some people and it was like it was well received my friend Hargo was there and uh who um he was really encouraging and gave me a lot of feedback at the time and so I felt good about it and as it evolved I was like okay this is going to be the first song on the record it's cool it's almost like saying thank you to my teacher as well by using his his line in in the song and uh yeah as I was kind of going about this path of working on my on this album I went through a lot of probably a lot of self-doubt you know I was going in deep into the darkness within all, all of this stuff you know I was living it so through that you know I I met um I met my friend Una Chaplin who's actually the girl in my music video and oh, I, yes, met, I, saw that. I, I met a different you know group of people a community and through that I, I had this idea. I was like, okay, let's let's make this into a video. And I just had an idea of a girl and a fire and some kind of dance. And as you know, it was a very this was 2019 is when we did it. It was a very cool um, time. And I connected with my friends at the Boa Foundation and Aniwa. And Ani was a a festival where they bring indigenous elders from all over the world to teach workshops and things like that. And so. Um, in that i was introduced to uh you know to ninawa who is the chief of the huni queen tribe that is in the video so Ooh, the way wow. it all came together with everyone's schedules coming and all that stuff it was kind of like catching a shooting star being able to film that in uh in that way and, and we captured it in joshua tree and um yeah it was a really special uh thing so it's like a long um... story Wow, I think uh, everything mystically fell in place. Definitely, yeah. So I think that's quite interesting. And I also would like to know what are the various genres which you have included in the music dive? I'm sure it um, happened in South America. I mean, the Indian tradition there, right? The shaman. Uh, so I would yeah. like to know more um, the whole genre of the music itself. Like, as you said that it was your journey and where you were speaking about your journey as an, uh, you know, dive into the darkness. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I want to know while I listen to that music and I understand that there are various genres involved. There's so much of vibrations, different, different vibrations. It's just not <laughs> yeah. one. Yeah. So I just want um, to know more about it. That which are the different genres in that music? Yeah, that's a good question. Which? Um, yeah, I mean, I think part of making that song, and you know, just I remember I was playing all these different instruments and like, okay, I'm gonna play this and then do that, and you know, I just kind of started to to get like a like an idea in my head of of me wanting to combine a lot of like, you know, there's a um, there's a lot of different sonic sounds right so there's a lot of the tempo of it is very much like electronic music dance music um and then a lot of the elements are very like electronic music based but uh a lot of the instruments i played you know it's just it's actually very similar it's like just the normal instruments you would play but i think the textures that are in there there's some textures from india there's a thing called the tanpura machine which is like a um Oh, wow. Yeah, there's a Tampura machine, which is just like a drone. For anybody that doesn't know, it sounds like a sitar that's just droning. Um, I think that the genres, it's like, to me, it's like shamanic house music, you know. It's like, to me, it's electronic at the end of the day. But um, it's vocal driven electronic music. It has elements of medicine music. It has elements of rock and roll. It has elements of electronic. And so, yeah, in that way, I was... Um, I'm a huge fan of this band called Nine Inch Nails. And so I was thinking a lot about that and about how to kind of take that approach and like the raw like power. And then I was also thinking about how this would sound with a live band the whole time. So I incorporated a lot of live things into it. And that's, wow. um, it was, that's, yeah, it was a, uh, it was a cool thing to do to mix all that. And it, came together like you know it's like cooking sometimes you just throw a bunch of stuff together <laughs> that's amazing that's yeah beautiful so i think um i see a lot of people asking questions but i think okay. i have few questions left after which yeah. i will uh, open the platform for uh, everyone else to ask questions 
Um, so I'm going to uh, take what is your biggest fear as an artist post which I finish with my questions. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. So my next question is, um, can you tell us more about um, Huni Kion and the fundraiser which you're working on? Yeah, uh, it's exciting. So the Huni Queen, they are a indigenous tribe from Brazil. Um, and there's, you know, they're a big community and they are, you know, they carry a lot of really sacred teachings, um, in their culture and music. And they're just, they're keeping a very ancient culture alive in times where, um, a lot of that has disappeared. So, you know, they, they're, uh, they're healers. Um, they, are they're just a very very powerful people and they're very joyful and they're very colorful they actually when i first met um ninawa uh at at aniwa <laughs> um, yet actually like the way they dress and the way they are it actually kind of reminded me a lot of indian culture so i felt like a, a connection there and then the colors they wear and just like some of them even the way their their face they're, the way they look um and so uh yeah, they're they're a very beautiful culture, and yeah. this fundraiser is to kind of just continue to help them more and more um, to be a sovereign people. So part of that was to uh, help them build a solar um, to ha give their one of the villages solar. So this right now we've raised like about four thousand um, dollars, and it's going to keep going. And I'm actually with this. Um, with this song dive there's two djs from europe that have remixed it so i'm actually about to release a remix and a longer version of the video and there's going to be some artwork some actual artwork uh that we're gonna working on something cool to auction off artwork and nfts and actually have that pay for uh the, the remaining we're trying to raise about another fifteen thousand. so um it's going to be it's going to be very very cool and then there's also just the the fundraiser is still open and there's a link on my bio to uh to go to it now we've been we have a gofundme open so i think that's amazing i think so yeah. uh, and uh, i'm sure it's intriguing me also to understand the culture the culture over there though um it's uh, similar to indians but i'm sure it's quite distinct and i'm quite intrigued to actually understand the culture there too and yeah. uh, that's amazing uh, with the fundraiser which y'all are you know collecting uh do let me know if i could be of help anywhere with that and i'm sure yeah. i can help you out with that amazing and, thank you uh, yes and i think now i'll leave the platform open for um everyone else to ask questions to you so i think um previously br valia had already asked a question what is your biggest fear as an artist my biggest fear as an artist um <laughs> that i become fearful as an artist <laughs> uh, i think that i think that yeah i mean that that would just i think one of the things that i've tried to embrace as an artist and as i'm doing this is to actually not be fearful is to uh stick to your vision of what you really want to do and even though other people get involved and sometimes it kind of moves or they give you their opinion um is to just not be fearful which keeps you authentic so I guess in a way it would be that if I lost my sense of authenticity, but I don't, I don't think that's possible So at this point. True, true. And I think uh, it's always a part of being fearless when you're an artist, because eventually being an artist, I think, of course, it's a very subjective question, but mm -hmm. um, a subjective thinking. But I think as an artist, um, you know, eventually you're doing what you want to do. And that yeah. itself is being fearless. So I think that's amazing. Um, Rakshi Valya asks, what is next? What's coming up next? Um, I'm actually, so I'm in Omaha, Nebraska right now working on my album, which I'm going to finish in the next month or two. Um, I'm working on an album. It's so, I released, the first thing I released is, it's, it was uh, called Initiation is the name of, it's like an EP, which is like three songs. And uh, um, now I'm working on a full length album that's going to be called Ancestral Visions. So um, that is the next thing coming up. So I'm going to be 
putting that out in uh, probably early next year. But I guess right right now coming up is uh, I'm releasing the remixes of uh, Dive. So there's two remixes Lovely. coming out and a longer version of the video. And so the next project is um, after that is Ancestral Visions, which is going to be uh, the first full length album. So I'm excited. That's amazing. I think yeah. I'm surely going to uh, be listening to the longer version. I think it's going to be very interesting. I am excited as well. And can you tell me more about the ancestral visions? Yeah, um, <laughs> I took a trip to um, to actually to the Amazon, uh, to the jungle in the winter of 2019. And um, it was like a retreat where you were by yourself in the jungle and a lot of time to meditate and pray and things like that. And so um, during that process, I just, it just felt like a light bulb went off and I needed to make an album called Ancestral Visions. So um, yeah, the name came to me and I was like, wow, this name's really, really cool. This is the name of my, of my first album. So um, I felt that and I felt a really strong need to go to Hawaii to write it and that's what ended up happening i mean obviously you know the pandemic and covid kind of was actually good because it like really forced everybody to slow down but um for me it felt really really good to be able to write a lot of music as i did last year so this year's putting all of that into action to complete the project so um it's the first yeah i think it'll i'm very excited about it i feel like it shows a lot of growth and maturity from the from the first thing I released. Um, and there's a lot of really cool, um, yeah, like if you like dive, then I think that you'll really enjoy all this, so. Okay, that's amazing. That yeah. sounds really interesting. So I think, um, Zane Haider, what's the next merch drop? I'm sorry, I do not understand merch drop. What's merch drop? So, oh, merch, yeah. Um, yeah what's the next merch drop okay um so yeah i the next merch drop is merch. um well merch is merchandise that's typically what it is so like you know okay. on my website i'll have a store you sell merch you know your paintings like everything is it's considered yes. merch it's kind of slang for okay. that okay merch um, drop okay all right <laughs> yeah so the drop is you know when so it's when... hit so um i'm actually uh the, where i've designed these really really uh, my friend Kachi, who's an artist, has designed these bandanas actually. So oh, I'm, wow. gonna, I'm gonna have the um, I'm gonna have the bandanas out probably in the next couple of months. They're, they're amazing. So I'll mail you one. Okay, I think yeah. that would be amazing. I mean, yeah. that would be really amazing. All yeah. right. So I think um, that's very interesting. And um, there's another question which has come: Is any plans to do some things inspired by East Indian music? Um, yeah, of course, on this Ancestral Visions, there's actually a, uh, I've, in, I've infused a lot of Indian sounds, but in like a kind of a unique way, tabla, sitar, um, tanpura, I, I love using tanpura machine all, all the time. Um, and so, uh, and actually uh, there's a, a female vocalist I'm trying to work with who's actually knows how to do koali music. And so I want her to Ooh. sing on something. So, wow. um, yeah, there's definitely a lot of plans, you know, it's sometimes it's a little tricky finding the right way to do to put in the East Indian music. But I think on this album, it's it's going to be done in a really cool kind of unique way. That's amazing. Yeah. That's yeah. amazing. I have a question yeah. for you. Uh, yeah. Being an artist, you must be, um, you know, working on a lot of creative music and instruments and everything. Mm -hmm. I'm sure. But have you any time faced a moment of burnout or, you know, mm -hmm. you're really tired with, you know, the creativity coming in? And how have um, you dealt with that? Um, that's a good question. I... <laughs> I mean, I definitely, I think before I would probably hit more of a burnout. I think um, you, you, when you mean burnout, do you mean just when you hit a wall and you're stuck? Kind of? Yes, yes. Yeah, I think, well, there's two things. I think when you put too much pressure, you that tends to happen when you're pressuring yourself to get something right or it has to be this amazing thing. Um, you kind of step out of being in the flow, which is what I usually refer to it as with it myself. Um, so when that happens, you know, it's happened, it happens, I think it happens often for every artist, 
Um, I read this Dude. book a long time ago on creativity and it said there was like, you know, they studied all these different artists and they figured out the different behaviors like that a lot of artists, they looked at the Parisian art scene in France, I think, and they just did a profile on a lot of painters, sculptors, musicians. And one thing that would happen that they talked about too, if they would get stuck, which was uh, there was coffee, cigarettes and going on walks. I don't smoke, but I drink coffee and I go on walks. So I typically, if that happens, I just step away and then I come back. And usually I'm a pretty obsessive thinker. So I'll think about it the whole time I'm walking, but then not being <laughs> there for a moment and then coming back to it fresh and just maybe not listening to it sometimes for like an hour or something else like that, or coming back even the next day. It's just knowing when to, um, it's just knowing when to, uh, um, knowing when to come back to it. And then usually it's always a fresh idea comes back. And I think the main thing for me is just making sure that I'm having fun and I'm excited about it. And if I am, then I, I'm usually doing something right. You know, that's amazing. That's really amazing. So we've got our next question from Mackenzie X Kennedy. I'm sorry mm -hmm. if I must have pronounced your name wrong. Uh, he asks, what is the name of this book? Very interesting from the one which you've told us. Um, oh my God. I, can't, For the burnout. I actually can't remember. <laughs> I can't remember. Um, but I'll find it. If, I'll think but about it. Sure. And, I'll, and I'll send it to her. Amazing. Amazing. Yeah. yeah. So amazing so i think um either she can reach out to you or you can reach out to gorfanian so uh, and you know um we i can help her out with the book whenever you amazing so um i wanted to also ask you which are the instruments which you're going to work on for uh, as you said there's going to be tabla there's going to be um the other indian instruments so which are the other in, indian instruments which you are going to be using for you know the the coming up song, which is the ancestor, you know? Oh, so yeah. I'm really uh, intrigued about that. Um, yeah. So, yeah, there's a Kowali singer. There is Tabla. There is some sitar. There is a, a Tanpura, which sounds like a sitar. Um, there's a lot of, like, percussion from all over the world, I found. Um, like, little shakers and things like that, you know. And so uh, some of those are from India, from, from Africa. Um, but yeah, and I think trying to, the Indian, it's like different, you know, the Indian putting in East Indian music, I kind of think about it more from like a, um, like a, an approach where it's more that a lot of Indian music is really hypnotic and it just pulls okay. you in. And so I actually try to take it more from that angle of trying to make the songs, um, hypnotic in a way and that they kind of pull you in and there's a mystery to it but then it's also really beautiful and you can feel that so sometimes it's like the the chords i play or the way i think about the song i think like indian music it's a way for me to think about like the approach how i would approach it and so uh that's typically um that's that that's how i feel that i put in indian music in like the influence in it and i feel that's something that uh is because I've listened to so much, but you know, with Indian music, it's such a, um, it's such a lifelong discipline if you do anything, you know, whether it's playing sitar or playing tabla and all that stuff. And so, um, and sometimes it's, they're such amazing instruments, but it can take a song over if it's not done in a really, 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 you have to be very tactful and tasteful with how you do it. And so um, I think the biggest thing that influences me in terms of putting that Indian vibe in is, or, you know, is listening to it and then letting that just come out in a way. But there's a approach that I, I try to take. So hopefully that answers your question. Amazing. That's amazing. Yeah. So I think um, I'm going to be uh, ending this by asking the last question. Uh, yeah. Do you have any advice for young artists or, you know, anyone who's joining or, uh, you know, starting their field in music industry? Um yeah i mean make sure you love doing it <laughs> that's the main thing true, it's like true, make sure true. you love doing it yes. and just keep doing it you know it's like don't give up and make sure that you're having fun in the process you know it's it's easy to get caught up in a lot of pressure that true, everybody puts true. on themselves as an artist 
So I think the thing that I've learned the most is all about really just making sure you remain excited about what you're doing. If you're not excited about it and you, and just being patient, you know, I'm, I've, I've had to do all of those things. So that's what I would say is just keep creating, you know, that's, that's what it comes down to. That's amazing. Uh, yeah. So I think I'm going to conclude now. Um, okay. So from my interview, I think um, you're one of the artists who, um, you know, I have seen a lot of times while I follow your page and, you know, the vibe which you get from your page and your music, that mm -hmm. you're one of the artists who um, does not go by pressure. I think it's very important yeah. for artists to, you know, love what they do and authentically you know, create what they are creating. So mm -hmm. I think that's a beautiful journey by itself and that itself is a spiritual journey. So that's yeah. amazing. So uh, thank you so much, Sanjay. Thank you so much for your input and knowledge. I'm sure the listeners learned a lot and even I did. And um, thank you everyone for being a part of uh, this live yeah. at God of Onions in the morning over here in IST and of course uh, your time as well. Yeah. And um, so y'all can uh, follow God of Onions, spot, our Spotify page, God of Onions, and please follow our page, God underscore of underscore onions on our Instagram page as well. Thank you so much.